That's different. Hi. Hi. Is this finally working? Yeah. We just gotta oh. wait for Courtney. Okay. Oh, I spent just spent the last five minutes just trying to figure this thing out and how like how how the the because I I had to download a program and everything, so oh. <clears throat> okay. So I think um, we just like all have to like go through our like scripts twice, at least she said. And then like we take notes of like each other's like while we're doing it, like if there's things we should fix or whatever. Okay. And then I think only one of us has to send the our meeting or whatever to, I think we have to post it on YouTube and then send her the link. And then like we're all supposed to send her like our notes that we took of each other too, I think. Okay. Yeah, that. Yeah, I can. I, Cause I'm just taking my notes on a sheet of paper here. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna type them up later and then send them to her. So. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Court. Oh, there's Courtney. There you are. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Okay. Oh my gosh, the printer that I used, like, didn't even, like, print it out. It looks really bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, not colored either, so I'm like, okay. All right. So, what are we doing? Let me start from this sheet again. I'm like, taking notes on this sheet. This oh, wait, what'd you say? We have to, like, we're taking notes on the sheet, right? Yeah, um. Person. Yeah, we just have to take notes of each other's, like, while we do it, like, both times, and then send them to her. Okay. Okay, who wants to go first? Um... I don't know. Amber, you got Oh, oh God. I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amber, what book are you doing? Um, I'm doing Sammy the Seal. Okay. Go ahead and start reading. <laughs> I'm starting. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so, by the way, my book has, like, I think like 10 different characters, so I'm going to try my best to try to like do them all different voices, but I don't know if I will be able 
too. Yeah, no, no worries. Just kind of just do your best and then we'll go from yeah, Let's work over it for now and then we can like, yeah, we'll like chat with you about it. So, okay. Let's hear it. Okay. Should I stand up maybe? I don't know. Okay. I mean, you don't have to. I think I'm just going to do mine sitting down because there's really no other room to do it. <laughs> I'll just do this. Right. Okay, so, um, are we just reading the script or should I, like, do my intro, too? Let's hear your intro. Yeah. Okay. So, the script I'll be reading today is Saving the Seal by Sid Hoff. This children's book was published in the year of 1959 and was made for children in preschool through junior high. And I chose this book because the story is something I think first graders would find fun and cute dealing with different animals and just the adventure that a seal takes. So now I'll start the script. It was feeding time at the zoo. All the animals were getting their food. The lions ate their meat, the elephants ate their hay, the monkeys ate their bananas, the bears ate their honey. Then it was time for the seals to be fed. Mr. Johnson took them fish. Hooray for fish, said the seals. They jumped in the water. Soon the basket was empty. That's all there is, said Mr. Johnson. There is no more. Thank you for the fish, said the seals. They were good. The seals were happy. <clears throat> but one little seal was not happy. He sat by himself. He looked sad. What is wrong, said Mr. Johnson. I want to know what it is like outside of the zoo, said the little seal. I want to go out and look around. All right, said Sammy. Said, or, All right, Sammy, said Mr. Johnson. You have been a good seal. You may go out and see. Goodbye, Sammy, said the other seals. Have a good time. Goodbye, said Sammy. Where are you going, said the zebra. I'm going out, said Sammy. Have fun, said the hippo. Come back soon, said the giraffe. Sammy walked and walked and walked. He did not know what to look at first. Sammy finds himself strolling through town, finding restaurants, pet stores, and somehow finding himself inside someone's house sitting in their bathtub. He then finds himself by a school and goes to class with the children. The class begins to sing a song. That sounds fine, said the teacher, but one of you is barking just like a seal. I'm sorry, said Sammy. I will be good. Please let me stay, Sammy told the teacher. All right, you may stay, said the teacher. Sammy was happy. He sat at his desk and looked at the teacher. He learned how to read. He also learned how to write. The class then went outside to play volleyball. Sammy caught the ball on his nose. Everyone was so happy. A bell rang and school was over. I will not be back tomorrow, said Sammy. I belong in the zoo. I just wanted to know what it is like outside. Now I will go back. Sammy was in a hurry to get back to the zoo. He had so much to tell the other seals. May I come home? May I welcome you home, Sammy, said Mr. Johnson. I am glad you are back. You are just in time for dinner. There is no place like home, said Sammy. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was like a good. Thing. I did so bad doing all the different characters. I really gotta work. Yeah, on. I think that's like one thing that I like couldn't tell the difference between like the characters. Yeah. Yeah, me neither. I would like I would like pause more in between because you kind of just like keep going, and even if yeah. it takes up too much time, like even like. <clears throat> out, like something if it's like you're just like reading the whole book because it sounds like it's like a lot yeah no I even like cut out pages like I I tried to make it as short as possible but I can cut out yeah. more funny too well just kind of like find like certain things that you can that you feel like are unnecessary to the story yeah won't like won't like take out any plot details or anything so that that'll make it a little bit shorter um, yeah Especially if you go back and add like pauses in between like sentences and different yeah. things like that. Yeah. I would agree and say that maybe a little bit more distinction between the voices. Something that I would help with that would be like making like different stances if you're standing up or like even different facial expressions would work. Yeah. Just those are just kind of some of the thoughts that I have. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so do it over again. Um, <laughs> wait, how about how about you guys both go and then after we can like okay. make our okay? Yeah, that's that's a good idea. That works. Um, I right, do you go? yeah, okay. sure. Okay. Okay. What book are you doing? 
Um, I'm doing Black Beauty from, well, not necessarily like the, I, I'm doing like Anna Sowell's version, but like it's retold by Marcia Martin for like little kids. Okay. So, and it is very long, so I did cut out like some pages, but I may have to cut out some more as like, okay. as we talk and things like that. Yeah. Maybe I should start timing these. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna do that because I didn't time the last one. You guys remember how long they have to be? Like five minutes, seven. Minutes? I think it's three to five. Three to five. Okay. Which is like, yeah, that shouldn't be difficult. To no, do. that shouldn't be too hard. All right, and that's like with the intro and everything, so that should be good. Okay. All right. Ready when you are. All right. Go ahead. Darkie was a handsome horse. His shiny black coat was fine and soft. He had one white foot and a pretty white star on his forehead. Darkie had lived on a big farm with many other horses ever since he was born. Now he was four years old and about to be sold to Squire Gordon who lived nearby. As Squire Gordon rode Darkie home, he could tell that the black horse had been well-trained. As Darkie could tell by the Squire's gentle hand on the reins and the kind way he talked to him, that his new master would treat him well. When they reached home, the squire's wife and two little girls, Jessie and Flora, were waiting for them. Oh, what a beautiful horse, they cried. Yes, said Squire Gordon. His name is Darkie, but he is such a handsome horse. I think he should have another name, don't you? How about Black Beauty, asked Mrs. Gordon. Black Beauty, said, said the squire slowly. Yes, that is a very good name for him. Black Beauty was happy at Squire Gordon's. There were several other horses, but he soon became the favorite. Not only did the squire like him best, but the two little girls loved the gentle horse. They often came to pet him to, and to take rides on him. Late one night, the squire Gordon hurried into the stable. I am sorry to disturb you this hour, Joe, the squire said to Joe Green, the boy who took care of the horse, but Mrs. Gordon is very ill and I must ride for the doctor. Joe quickly saddled Black Beauty and Squire Gordon galloped away. Black Beauty knew that something was wrong and that his master was in a great hurry. The horse ran as fast as he could. When Squ Squire Gordon reached the doctor's house, it was three in the morning. He rapped is loudly at the door. Will you please come at once, Squire Gordon begged the doctor. My wife is very ill. Of course I will come, replied the doctor, but my horse has gone lame. May I ride yours? Black Beauty is very tired, the squire said. We galloped all the way over, but I am, he, but I am sure he will get him there. Take him and I will walk. The doctor dressed quickly, climbed Black Beauty, and away they went. The doctor was much heavier than Squire Gordon and not nearly so good a rider, but Black Beauty, even though he was almost exhausted, ran fast as he could. It, in the beginning to grow light, when they arrived home, the doctor went to the house. Little Joe Green led Black Beauty back to the stable. Joe rubbed Beauty's legs and chest and gave him some water to drink, but Joe did not know that he had that he should have covered him in warm blankets and giving him hot food instead of water. Joe loved horses, but this was his first job and he had much to learn. Soon Black Beauty began to, uh, began to fall ill. He, he laid in a stall, shivering for what seemed like a very long time. Finally, Squire Gordon arrived home. He was very tired after his walk and then he immediately discovered what had happened. He just Black Beauty, he covered Black Beauty with warm blankets and gave him a little hot water to drink and called the horse doctor. Um, Black Beauty was very sick. Uh, Joe Green came to see him every day and Squire Gordon and the nurse, with help of the nurse, horse doctor, nursed a, a Beauty back to health. One day when he was, when Black Beauty was well again, um, uh, yeah, well, just gonna go on forever, so. <laughs> it's, it kind of goes on forever. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like I, I like, couldn't tell when you were gonna stop. I was like, okay. So, yeah, I know. I have to cut. I have to, it's like mark that. Yeah, mark that because you got to three thirty, which is like great. Okay. Yeah. So that was like really good. Yeah. Okay. It's. It's. I think the the book doesn't necessarily because I have the book here too because it's like it was my dad's yeah. when it was. Yeah. It's 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 long, but also. I, yeah, there's more to it than that, but I felt weird, so. <laughs> um, so I thought it was really good. The only thing I thought at the beginning was you were just going kind of fast, and I didn't know 
or like their voices between like a couple characters, but that was just at the beginning. The rest, like, it was really easy to tell. Okay. Good. Yeah, I could like at the beginning, I was like, I couldn't tell the difference between like your narrating voice and then um, the one like main guy. I don't know what his name is. Okay. General or something. But then like once you got into it, it like kind of like I can tell the difference. Yeah. Which is like good. And then once like the doctor comes in, because the doctor starts speaking too, right? Yeah, well, he speaks, like, a couple of times, but... Okay, so, yeah, when the doctor comes in, make sure that you use, like, different voices between, like, the general or whatever, and then the doctor, because they, like, sounded the same. Yeah. So, yeah. But other than that, it was, like, good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. My turn. Okay. What book are you doing again, KJ? I'm doing Put Me in the Zoo. Okay. Yeah. Robert Lobshire. I'm per I can't tell if it's, um, I mean, it's a Dr. Seuss book, but it's, is Robert Lobshire is not Dr. Seuss, right? I don't think so, no. <laughs> I was, like, super confused. <coughs> maybe it's, like, an, maybe it's, like, an interpretation of, like, Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I mean, I know that Dr. Seuss is, like, an alias for, for, like, the guy, but maybe that's his actual name. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, okay, Do you want me to time yours, Courtney? Oh, yeah, you can. I was just going to say one thing. Uh, let's see. Really I lost my phone. I'm like, pause in between, so it's like, not. Nah, doesn't seem as short. Here, I got my phone right here. I can time it. Okay. <laughs> All right, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay. I will be interpreting the book, Put, Put Me in the Zoo by Robert Lockshire, published the year of 1960. I chose this book because it puts out a good message to young readers that we all have a place for ourselves, but just might not be where we want or are expecting it to be. I will go into the zoo, I wanna see it. Yes, I do. I would like to live this way, this is where I wanna stay. Will you keep me in the zoo? I wanna stay in here with you. We do not want you in the zoo. Out you go, out, out with you. Why did they put me into the zoo? I should be in. I want to stay. Why should they pay you? What good are you? What can you do? What good am I? I? What can I do? Now, here's one thing I can do. Look, now all the spots are blue, and now spots are orange, say he looks very good that way. Now, look at this. What do you see? Green spots, as green as can be. Violet spots, say you are good. Do more, do more. We wish you would. I can do more. This is new. Blue, orange, green, and violet too. Oh, they would put me in the zoo if they can see what I can do. I can put my spots on this ball. I can put my spots on the wall. I can put them on the cat and I can put them on a hat. I can put them on the zoo and I can put my spots on you. Look at this now. One, two, three. I can put them on a tree. And now when I say one, two, three, all my spots are back on me. Look now, here's one thing more. I take my spots, I make them four. Oh, they would put me in the zoo if they could see what I can do. I take my spots, I put them, I take them all, and I can make them very tall. And now you see, I can take them all, and I can make very tall. And now you see, I can make, oh, wait, I just did that over again. And when I want to have more fun, I take my spots, and I make them one. Yes, they should put me in the zoo. The things my spots can do, See, I can put them in the box, I can take them out, they look like socks, and I can put them way up high. Up, up, they go, I make them fly. I put them high up in the air, my spots fly here, my spots fly there, I can call them back now. One, two, three, now my spots are back on me. Tell me, tell me, now you too. Do you like the things I do? Tell me, tell me for real. Now you too, will you put me in the zoo? We like the things you do. We like your spots. We like you too. But you should not be in the zoo. No, you should not be in the zoo. With all the things that you can do, the circus is the place for you. Yes, circus is the place I want to be. The circus is the place for me. Done. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was two minutes and 40 seconds. Okay. I can slow down and I can do that. Yeah, that was one of my notes. I was saying slow down because it's we're like rushing through it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was really one. And then like 
I had like a brief moment, like right in, like right in the middle where I was just like, oh, that's the book she's doing. <laughs> right. I completely forgot what it was for a second. <laughs> and so I had to, because I thought, I wrote down under the beginning, it's just like, is the book mostly characters? Like, is there a narrator? Because I couldn't really. Yeah. Between no, it, the two. Literally is, it literally is just like the characters. There's no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense then. Yeah. Um, one like my main notes are like slow down and then maybe differentiate mm-hmm. between like because a lot of the a lot of the voices that you're doing are higher pitched so yeah. maybe try maybe to differentiate it a little bit more maybe try to do okay. one one higher pitched voice for like the kids and then do like a medium pitched or a medium to low pitch voice for yeah, like yeah. for like the the creature so no well, yeah because he is basically like spot is basically like talking the whole time yeah <laughs> And then, like, they come in and out. So, yeah, I think that's my problem is, like, differentiating the two because I even had that problem, like, t- t- like talking it. I was like, oh, my gosh, this, like, sounds the same. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to try not to do that. All right. Um, and then I thought that you also had a really good introduction and, like, your gestures for all the characters were really good, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Okay, I'm just going to go through mine really quick before I go again and, like, cut out, like, a couple things that I don't really think that I need. Okay. <clears throat> Do you think, like, at the part where, like, the, I have said, that, like, the zebra was talking and the hippo and the giraffe, like, when they're just, like, where are you going? Come back soon. Do you think I could just, like, cut those out? Because that's three different characters that I don't need to do. Like, they're just asking where he's going. Even if you are doing different voices, I feel like, like you shouldn't need to say, like, said this, said that, because I think that's what adds so much to it, because after everything that, like, a character says, it's, like, drop said, blah, 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 said, and then yeah. said. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, like, the majority of it is, like, they said this, they said that, they said this, they said that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. But I don't know if that's like a thing. Can you even like cut out stuff like that? <laughs> um. Okay, I'll just like redo it again with like everything except I just cut out a couple things and then later today I'll probably take out a bunch of like what you just said, like like when they say like said this, said that. Yeah, because yeah. If, you're, if you're, like, voices are, like, distinct enough, like, you shouldn't have to say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. <laughs> I'm just writing notes, like, slow down, slow down, slow down. Slow yeah. Down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start now. Well, one of you guys time me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can, I can just be the desi- designated timer. Okay. All right. Ready okay. when you are. Now, the script that I'll be reading today is Sammy the Seal by Sid, by Sid Hoff. This children's book was published in the year of 1959 and was made for children in ages preschool through junior high. And I chose this book because the story is something that I think first graders would find fun and cute dealing with all the different animals in it and the adventure that a seal takes. It was feeding time at the zoo. All the animals were getting their food. The lions ate their meat. The elephants ate their hay. The monkeys ate their bananas. The bears ate their honey. Then it was time for the seals to be fed. Mr. Johnson took them fish. Hooray for fish, said the seals. They jumped in the water. Soon the basket was empty. That's all there is, said Mr. Johnson. There is no more. Thank you for the fish, said the seals. They were good. The seals were happy. But one little seal was not happy. He sat all by himself. He looked sad. What is wrong, Sammy, said Mr. Johnson. I want to know what it is like outside the zoo, said the little seal. I want to go out and look around. All right, Sammy, said Mr. Johnson. You have been a good seal. You may go out and see. Goodbye, Sammy, said the other seals. Have a good time. 
Bye, said Sammy. Sammy walked and walked and walked. He did not know what to look at first. Sammy soon finds himself strolling through town, finding restaurants, pet stores, and somehow finding himself inside someone's house, sitting in their bathtub. He then finds himself by a school and decides to go to class with the children. The class begins to sing a song. That sounds fine, said the teacher, but one of you is barking, just like a seal. I am sorry, said Sammy. I will be good. Please let me stay, Sammy told the teacher. All right, you may stay, said the teacher. Sammy was happy. He sat at his desk and looked at the teacher. He learned how to read. He also learned how to write. The class went outside to play volleyball. Sammy caught the ball with his nose. Everyone was happy. Soon later, the bell rang and school was over. I will not be back tomorrow, said Sammy. I belong in the zoo. I just wanted to know what it was like outside. Now I will go back. Sammy was in a hurry to get back to the zoo. He had so much to tell the other seals. May I welcome you home, Sammy, said Mr. Johnson. I am glad you are back. You are just in time for dinner. There is no place like home, said Sammy. Okay. Okay, I still noticed myself, like, in the beginning, like, the difference between, like, Sammy talking and the narrator, I feel like sounds the same. Yeah, I thought it was, like, I thought it was, like, better at the beginning than, like, yeah. starting okay. going through it. That's when it became, like, a blur again. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So just... Re- I'd, be, I'd be more distinct with Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson sounds like you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I agree. The The beginning was, was really good, so just remember that like in the middle in that middle section just to, to kind of pick the voice pick the mem- remember to stay in tune with all the voices and everything like okay that, so. yeah. <sighs> oh I forgot to stop the timer um it was, it was about 3 15 okay <laughs> okay oh it's just <laughs> Sorry, one of my coworkers is texting me asking me to give her a ride to work on Thursday. You're good. All right. Okay, so I'm going to time myself here. So I am going to be um, I am going to be reading a script from um, Anna Sewell's Black Beauty, retrans- uh, retold for young children by Marcia Martin, and it was published in 1952. Darky was a handsome horse. His shiny black coat was fine and soft. He had one white foot and a pretty white scar on his forehead. Darky had lived on a big farm with many other horses ever since he was born. Now he was four years old and about to be sold to Squire Gordon, who had lived nearby. As Squire Gordon rode Darky home, he could tell that the black horse had been well trained, and Darky could tell by the squire's gently hand on his on the reins that the in the kind way that he talked to him, that his new master would treat him well. When they reached home, the squire's wife and two little girls, Jesse and Flora, were waiting for them. Oh, of course, they cried. Yes, agreed Squire Gordon. His name is Darky, but he is such a handsome horse. I think he should have another name, don't you? Black Beauty, asked Mrs. Gordon. Black Beauty, said the squire slowly. Yes, that is a very good name for him. Black Beauty was happy at Squire Gordon's. There were several other horses, but he soon became the favorite. Not only did the squire like him best, but the two little girls loved the, squ- loved the gentle horse. Late one night, Squire Gordon hurried into the stable. I am sorry to disturb you at this hour, Joe, the squire said to Joe Green, the boy who took care of the horse. But Mrs. Gordon is very ill, and I must ride for the doctor. And quickly, Joe saddled in Black Beauty and Squire Gordon galloped away. Black Beauty knew that something was wrong, and his master was in a great hurry. He reached the doctor's house. It was three in the morning. He, he knocked loudly at the door. Will you please come at once, Squire Gordon begged the, begged the doctor. My wife is very ill. Of course I will come, replied the doctor, but, but my horse has gone, has gone lame. May I ride yours? 
pause because my computer's going dead. No. Oh. <laughs> Black Beauty is very tired, the squire said. We galloped all the way over, but I'm sure he will get you there. Take time, I will walk. The doctor dressed quickly, climbed up on the Black Beauty, and away they went. The Black Beauty, even though he was almost exhausted, ran as fast as he could. It was beginning, it was almost dawn when they, when they arrived home, and the doctor rushed inside. Little Joe Green led Black Beauty back into the stable. The horse's body was soaking wet, and he could hardly stand. Joe, Joe rubbed Beauty's legs and chest to give him, and gave him some water to drink. But Joe did not know that he should have covered him with warm blankets and given him hot food instead of water. Joe loved horses, and this was his first job, and he had much to learn. Soon, um, soon Black Beauty began to shake and tremble, and he felt terribly cold. He lay in a stall, shivering for what seemed like a very long time. Finally, Squire Gordon arrived home. He was very tired after his long walk, but he saw immediately what had happened. He covered Black Beauty with warm blankets, gave him a little hot water to drink, and called the horse doctor. Black Beauty was very sick. The, um, everyone came to see him every single day and to tell him how sorry they were that this, is that this had happened. The, horse, the Squire Gordon and the horse doctor nursed, nursed Beauty back to health very soon. One day, when, he was well, when, when Beauty was well again, the Squire Gordon and Joe came to see him. I will certainly be sorry to lose this horse, Squire Gordon said to Joe. You know he saved Mrs. Gordon's life when she was so ill. Not better, but the doctor says we must move on to a warmer place. Come to your house, asked Joe. We shall close it, the squire answered, and we shall have to sell the horses. A friend of mine needs a stable boy. And then that goes, what goes on more. Uh, oh. I think you should stop at when they like, when it said, like the narrator says, oh, they like, like brought him back to health or whatever. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good, because I think after that is when you like get hesitant on like where to stop. Yeah. So. No, I agree that. with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was still, it was, that was only at four minutes, that's four minutes and seven seconds, but that was, that was after I had to plug my computer in so yeah. no yeah yeah it was still good yeah I think you had better yeah you definitely had better like differentiating before between the characters that time and you had mm -hmm. more like, enthusiasm and you like put more like yeah you just put more enthusiasm on like parts of situations so yeah, yeah. one was better um, I thought it was really good too. The only thing I said was like for your introduction, make sure that you talk about like what age group that your book is for and then oh, yeah. also why you chose that book. Okay. Yep. Cool. It's my turn again. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can't stop like smiling right now, okay? <laughs> when the living room starts geeking out. All right. I will be interpreting the book. Put me, put me with it. Okay. Oh. reading it wrong. Okay. Timer. The Interpreting the Book, Put Me in the Zoo by Robert Lopshire, published the year of 1960. I chose this book because it puts out a good message to young readers that we all have a place for ourselves, but it just might not be where we want or are expecting it to be. I would go into the zoo. I want to see it. Yes, I do. I would like to live this way. This is where I want to stay. Will you keep me in the zoo? I want to stay in here with you. We do not want you in the zoo. Out you go. Out. Out with you. Why did they put me out this way? I should be in. I want to say. Why should ugh. <laughs> why should they put you in the zoo? What good are you? What can you do? What can I? What can I do? Now here's one thing I can do. Look, now all the spots are blue. And now the spots are orange. Say, he looks very good that way. Now look at this. What do you see? Green spots, as green as can be. Violet spots say, you are good. Do more, do more. We wish you would. 
Yes, they did put you. They should put me in the zoo. The things my spots can do. Oh wait, I had my sheets backwards. Sorry. I can do more. Look, this is new. Blue, orange, green, and violet too. Oh, they would put me in the zoo if they can see what I can do. I could put my spots on this ball. I could put my spots on the wall. I could put them on a cat. I can put them on a hat. I can put them on a zoo. I can put my spots on you too. Look at this now. One, two, three. I can put them on a tree. Now, when I say one, two, three, put my spots are back out. Look, look now. Here is one thing more. I take my spots, I make them four. Oh, they would put me in the zoo if they can see what I can do. I take my spots, I take them all, and I can make them very small. And now, you see, I take them all, and I can make them very tall. And when I want to have more fun, I take my spots, and I make them one. Yes, they should put me in the zoo. The things my spots and I can do, See, I could put them in a box. I take them out and they look like socks. I could put them way up high. I put them high up in the air. My spots fly here, my spots fly there. I can make them back, I can call them back now. One, two, three. Now all my spots are back on me. Tell me, tell me, now you too. Do you like the things I do? Tell me, tell me, now you too. Will they put me in the zoo? We like all the things you do. We like your spots. We like you too. But you should not be in the zoo. No, you should not be in the zoo. With all the things that you can do, the circus is the place for you. Yes, this is where I want to be. The circus is the place for me. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Um, I put that like it, you weren't like rushing as fast, like it was definitely slower. And you really like emphasize like your different characters is really good. Yeah, you hit about three ten. Okay, cool. So That's better. Yeah. That was that was a lot better. I think you. I think I felt better going through it. <laughs> yeah, because I I liked that you that you not necessarily just like slowed down, but you also took the time to pause when there needed to be pauses to like yeah. emphasize different points and that and those and that stuff. So. And I did like the like the different pitched voices between the two groups of characters. So, great, cool, very good. <clears throat> Much better. Yeah, I literally just put my yeah my sheets were not in order. Oh, so uh, it's all right though. Part I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah. So. I will take those notes into consideration. Yes, me too. Yes, definitely. All right, so then I will post this to YouTube and then email it to her. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Bye. Bye.